Hello and welcome to this After Effects Basics tutorial which is looking at the issue of parenting. Now parenting is when one layer can be used to control another layer. Now if you have a child running around outside, the child's free to roam, but when the parent decides that it's going to go, it grabs the child by the hand and takes the child with it. And wherever the parent goes, the child follows. And then when the parent stops, the child's still free to do its own thing, and again when the parent moves again it grabs hold of the child's hand and pulls them with it and it's the same type of thing in After Effects. One layer can be the parent and wherever the parent goes the child must follow but the child is still independent and can still do its own thing although it must always follow the parent wherever the parent goes. This is going to become more obvious in a couple of minutes. Now if you don't have the parent column showing in your timeline right click on your timeline and go to columns and make sure that parent is ticked and then you'll have the parent column alternatively you can play with the buttons at the bottom or hit F4 which may bring them up but either way just make sure that you can see parent now in this composition I've got three layers I've got the Sun the moon and the earth and if I select the Sun layer you'll see that it is animated I've animated rotation so that it spins around three and a half times in five seconds so that's the Sun. However, the Earth has got nothing on its rotation, the Moon for after rotation, nothing on its rotation. There is no animation on the Earth or the Moon. So I can do whatever I want with those layers. They're completely free. I can grab hold of them and shift them around, whatever I want to do. However, as soon as I decide to parent, say, the Earth to the Sun, wherever the Sun goes, the Earth must follow. At the moment, the Sun's spinning around, but the Earth isn't following. It would be very hard to animate the Earth so that it's spun around the Sun properly, but with parenting it's dead easy. Now to do parenting we've got the Earth, and we want to say to the Earth, who's your daddy? Who are you going to have to follow? And clearly we want the Earth to follow the Sun. So in the parenting column we have got a drop down so that we can say, okay Earth, who are you going to follow? Follow the Sun. Now there is another way of doing it which I think is easier because it's more visual, and I like the visual approach. So we go back to none, you've got this thing called a pick whip. Now this pick whip is a way of selecting the appropriate layer. So we're on the earth layer, we can click on the pick whip, we click and hold and say to the earth layer, okay, who's your daddy, which layer is your daddy? And as I drag out, I can drag it down to the actual layer I want to be its parent, which is in this case the sun, let go, and you can see it's actually selected. So now when I hit the space bar, you can see that the earth must follow the sun. Go round three and a half times. So, we've been able to do some animation with the Earth and the Sun. However, if I want to move the Earth and actually change its position, say I think it's too far away, for instance, from the Sun, I can grab hold of the Earth and pull it closer to the Sun. The Earth is free to be moved, and when I hit the space bar, it's actually a lot closer to the Sun. However, if I move the Sun, so I select my Sun layer, click and move, now, wherever the Sun goes, the Earth must follow because the Earth has been parented to the Sun. So, we've got a little bit more animation to do. Let's move the Earth out just a tad. And let's say we want the Moon parented to the Earth. So wherever the Earth goes, the Moon must follow. So we select the Moon layer, take its pick whip and say, who's your daddy? Obviously the Earth is, let go. And now when I hit the space bar, well, we've got something, but it's not very good. Because ideally we want the Moon to be going around the Earth, and you can see they clearly go off screen there. That's no good. We need the Earth closer to the Sun, we need the Moon closer to the Earth, and actually the Sun isn't even in the middle of the screen. Now if I select the Sun layer and start moving it, you will see that the Earth and the Moon will move. Why is that? Well, the Earth is parented to the Sun, and so the Earth will move, but the Moon is parented to the Earth, and so the Moon will move. So if I select this layer, you'll see all of them are moving together. Now I can select the Earth, and when I move the Earth, the Moon must follow, because it is parented to the Earth. But when I move the Moon, and I'm going to zoom in so I can get a better look at the Moon, 
And when I grab hold of the moon and move the moon, nothing else follows because the moon has not got any children following it. It is the final child. It is following the Earth. So let's just check to see if that stays on screen. Oh, it's just going to go off screen. So we'll just modify that slightly. Go to the worst point. Zoom in. Hold the space bar to get the hand tool. And then pull that down so it stays on screen. Then we can do fit. Now at the moment, when I hit the space bar, it's just going around boringly. But what we want to do is have the moon orbiting the Earth. And to do that, all we need to do is rotate the Earth. So if we hit the stopwatch for rotation on the Earth layer, and we go to the end of our animation and say we want it to rotate that also, say, three and a half times. So what you can do is simply click here where it says 0 times 0, 0, and do 3.5 and hit return. And you'll see it says three complete revolutions and 180 degrees. Now... If I hit home to get to the beginning of my work area and hit play, you'll see that the moon's going around the earth, which is going around the sun. If we click away so nothing's selected, you can see the way that that looks. Now this complex animation would have been extremely difficult to do with keyframes. But with parenting, it actually is done with four keyframes. Two keyframes rotating the sun, two keyframes rotating the earth, and then parenting the Earth to the Sun and the Moon to the Earth. Let me show you another way of using parenting. This one's called Follow, and I've got a little snaky thing here, so if I hit Play, you'll see that this snaky thing jumps all over the screen and produces a, a sort of a light streak. Now, say I want something to follow this head, to show where it is, or to have a piece of text, or, or something to, to, to follow along. I've got a little arrow that I created, which is just a text layer. And don't worry, we will be doing text layers in the future. I can move that text layer to wherever I want it to start and then I say who's your daddy well I want you to follow the head of this snake so I can take the pick whip for the text go to the head of the snake or go to the snake layer and let go and then when I hit play you'll see that wherever the head of the snake goes the text is sure to follow now that is an extremely complex animation but simply done because it's following the properties of a layer which is moving this snake thing is moving around. However, I can still take the text and shift it to anywhere I like. So I can go right into the middle if I like, and then click, and it's going to go right into the middle of the head of the snake. Or again, I can select the layer and move it completely off to the side, and it will follow wherever I have set it. You can see it's gone completely off the screen there. So that's how you can use parenting to follow one thing that you've done. So if you've animated one layer across the screen, and you want, say, a piece of text to follow it, all you need to do is parent the text to the shape that is moving across the screen. One other great way of using parenting is when it comes to animating different types of items, such as this puppet that I've started building. Now, this puppet isn't wired up in any way, shape or form. I've done a couple of arms and put them in the right place. This is just for example. The only thing I wanted to point out with this is that you must make sure that your anchor points are in the right place. So if I take arm 2 here, you'll see that the anchor point is way over here. Now, if I want this to rotate, I want it to rotate here, where we're going to move it to the body. So to, to move the anchor point to the right place, I need to take the pan behind tool, grab hold of my anchor point, and move it to the appropriate place. And then go back to my selection tool with the V key, or by clicking back up here, and then I can take that layer and move it into place. And now when I rotate that layer, it will rotate from this point as opposed to from rotating way over here. Let's quickly do forearm two as well. You can see the anchor point is way over here. Take the pan behind tool, click and drag, take it to the end. And let's also do hand two and look for its anchor point. Well, its anchor point is well over here. And again, we can take that to, to the appropriate place. Go back to my selection tool and I can start to move these into the right place. So take him to there and take the hand. And one of the things we can see is actually the layer order is a problem. Over here, you can see we've got the arm behind the body, forearm behind the arm, and the hand behind the forearm. But these are clearly in the wrong order. How do I do that? Well, simple. I move the forearm to below arm to, and I move hands to below forearm to. And now if I click away, you'll see that they're roughly in the right area. Now, if I wanted to 
animate this, it would be very difficult without parenting because I'd need to, say, rotate this arm and then rotate and move this arm to the right place and then rotate and move the hand to the right place. But with parenting, it's very easy. And this is the route that we'll take. So we know that this is arm one over here because this is arm two. So I'm going to pull this up so we can see all the different layers. We know that arm one, this part of the arm, should follow the body so that wherever the body goes, this part of the arm shall follow. So we take arm one, we take the pick whip and we can drag it to wherever body is. There's body right at the top, so let go. So now, if I grab hold of body and move it, you'll see that the arm follows. I'm going to do control Z to undo that. Now we know that the forearm one must follow arm one. So we look for forearm one, take the pick whip and move it to arm one. Now when I shift body, you'll see that the arm follows the body, but the forearm follows the arm. And on we go. So control Z to undo that. And then hand one, which is here, is going to be parented to forearm one and let go. Now, if I select arm one and hold the shift key and go down to hand one, and with all those layers selected, hit R for rotation, and then click away so that they're not all selected. If I go back to arm one and start moving its rotation, you'll see that as I move it, the whole of the arm is moving. So I can move that down. And now I can rotate the forearm and I can rotate the hand. And I can animate these different rotations. And if I take the body and shift the body, wherever the body goes, the other bits and pieces will follow. So if I really wanted to wire this up, I could say select the two eyes and then take the pick whip and take those down to the head so that wherever the head goes, the eyes will follow. Control Z. And I can take the head and say, okay, head, you need to follow the neck. And I can say to the neck, neck, you need to follow the body. So now when I select the body layer and move it, you'll see that the arm, the eyes, the head and the neck all move together so that I can actually physically move the item around and still create animation. And this is all because of parenting. So what I do is I parent this arm up and both of these legs up and then I can animate them to my heart's desire, creating some really fun types of animation just by playing with rotation and position and having a whale of a time. So that's how parenting is extremely useful. It can save you an awful lot of time for animation because let's just quickly look at the other arm unparented. So arm two, if I go to arm two and I hit R for rotation, forearm two, R for rotation, hand two, R for rotation. Now if I rotate arm two, rotate it down, and now I rotate forearm two, um, but I also have to shift P, so hold shift and P to get position, because I actually now need to, oh, well, take it down to the right place. Um, and then to animate the hand, uh, I'm also going to need position for hand as well, aren't I? So select hand and a shift P to bring up position as well as rotation. Then I can rotate the hand to the appropriate place. And then I need to actually physically shift it across, maybe up a bit. And maintaining that link so that it always looked correct would be incredibly difficult. And of course, you would have to do it on a move by move basis using keyframes. Whereas with this particular arm over here, all I need to do is move one thing and all the rest follow. So that's an introduction to parenting. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.